This video will cover the basics of predictions and building predictive cohorts. Now that we've gone through a basic workflow of segmenting and syncing audiences, let's briefly take a look at how Amplitude uses machine learning to help you create new audiences for personalization. As we've mentioned before, you can think of predictive cohorts as similar to behavioral cohorts, except that they're built by grouping users based on their likelihood of doing some future outcome that you specify. You can sync predictive cohorts to downstream destinations and use them in campaigns just like behavioral cohorts. Before you can create a predictive cohort, you first have to create a prediction. In a prediction, Amplitude uses the past behavior of users to build a mathematical model predicting which users will do the future outcome that you specify and which users won't. It's important to note that predictions work well only in specific situations, including having a large enough starting cohort size so that you're able to draw reliable statistical inferences. Let's take a look at an example scenario. Let's say I work at an e-commerce company and I want to predict new users who are likely to make at least one purchase in the next week. I might want to send these users a custom welcome email to nudge them to convert. I'll need to build a prediction and then save a predictive cohort, which I can then sync to a marketing platform to send my communication. Let's look at how to do this in the product. First, we need to define our starting cohort. This is the group of users Amplitude will look at to develop its predictive model. Since I'm interested in new users, I will choose had been new anytime during the last 30 days. Then I'll check if my cohort size is large enough for the prediction. Next, I'll define my future outcome, which is seeing if these new users will make at least one purchase in the next week. So that will be the event complete purchase with count greater than or equal to one anytime in the next seven days. We won't cover advanced model configuration in this course, so let's skip that. Then I'll click save. It will take some time for Amplitude to build this prediction, so let's take a look at one that I built earlier. You can view all of the predictions in your project by clicking Predictions in the left-hand navigation. I'll find my prediction and then click on it to see the analysis page. The first thing you'll see is the model health. Clicking on it shows you various metrics that are used to assess how accurate the prediction is. You can learn more about what these metrics mean by visiting our help center. But for now, let's assume this prediction is accurate enough for our purposes. You'll then see a graph showing the percentile of users on the x-axis and their likelihood to convert on the y-axis. So in this case, that would be the likelihood that a new user will complete at least one purchase in the next seven days. There are some pre-built audience definitions that you can select to define your predictive cohort. For example, the top 20% segment contains the top 20% of users as ranked by their probability to convert. So this segment contains 51,084 users with a predicted conversion rate of 8.23%. It seems like a lot to send an email to that many users. So I can actually adjust my percentile. Let's say I only want to look at the top 5% of my users who have the highest likelihood of converting. This segment has 12,772 users with a 26.3% predicted conversion rate. Below the graph, the feature importance table ranks the events and user properties that are most important to your predictive model. This is here to show you what signals go into generating the graph above. You can find more information on what this table shows in the Help Center. Now I'll save my predictive cohort. I'll call my cohort Predicted Early Spenders. Once I've saved my predictive cohort, I can set up a one-time sync to a marketing platform and export this cohort of users so I can target them with my custom welcome email. You can also use predictive cohorts in charts and analyses, 
just like any other cohort. For example, I might want to look at a Pathfinder analysis of this cohort to see what paths users who have a high likelihood of converting might take through my product. There's a lot more that you can do with predictive cohorts, so be sure to check out our Help Center for more information.